Bounding ball collision detection is the next step on from bounding box collision detection, which I've covered in a previous video, and I'll put a link up in the top corner so you can get to that one. The game on screen at the moment is using this bounding ball detection for all of the collisions between missile ships and so on. So let's have a look at how we can actually implement this then in our code. In bounding box detection, we put our objects inside a square or a rectangle, and this forms this bounding box which we can then use to detect when objects are overlapping. But as square objects start to rotate, or if we have irregularly shaped objects, we'll find that some corners or bits of the object will start to come outside this bounding box. Now we could continually adjust the size of this box to make sure that our object stays inside it, but that sort of defeats the object of the bounding box being fast and requiring minimal computation. In these circumstances, it might be better then to use a bounding circle or, or bounding ball to c contain our object. So if we're using circles to represent each of our objects, our problem now comes down to working out when these circles overlap. So if we're using a centre point and a radius for each of our objects, we can start to do some calculations to work out how far these objects are apart. We need to calculate the distance d, as shown in the diagram above, which is the distance between the insertion point centres of each of our objects. If this distance then is less than or equal to the sum of the two radii, then we've got a collision between our objects. We can calculate d by looking at the difference in our x-coordinates and our y-coordinates, which in effect gives us two sides of a right-angled triangle, with our distance d being the hypotenuse. We can then use Pythagoras' theorem to write the equation where d squared is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. Now if this was a maths problem, we'd then take the square root of this answer and give us the actual distance d, which would be measured in pixels. But we're programmers, so we're more interested in getting an answer that works for us, but that uses the least amount of computing power possible. Now square roots are actually quite expensive in computing terms, especially if we compare it to a simple multiplication. So if we were to leave our answer as d squared, we could actually do a comparison then between d squared and the sum of the two radii squared. And again, note that square is simply just a single multiplication. So if we now add up all of the mathematical operations needed to compute this um, bounding ball distance, we can see that to get d squared, we have to use two subtractions, one addition and two multiplications. And then our comparison is just simply one addition, one multiplication, and the actual comparison operation itself. So we removed the need for any complicated mathematical operations, which would slow our program down. And these speed considerations are very real in these sorts of situations. Because we're going to have lots and lots of bullets and objects flying around on our game. And if you consider if we have 10 objects and 10 bullets flying around, then we have to do all 10 objects compared with all 10 bullets, which gives us 100 comparisons to make. So if each collision detection starts to use lots of computing power by using these complicated operations, then our game's going to slow down as we get lots of characters on the screen. And again, sometimes you can see this in games where your frame rate starts to drop when lots of things appear in your gameplay area. So let's look at this ball collision detection in action then. Um, I've written a little demo program. And again, um, you'll be able to get access to this demo program if you visit my website. Um, I, every video I do, I produce a project or tutorial page for that as well, which covers sort of most of the main points and sometimes then has little demo programs. So you can actually visit that page and, and I'll put a link in the description below and you can run this code and see it working for yourself and also see the actual source code so you can see how I've put it all together. So in this demo then, we can use the arrow keys or the cursor keys on your keyboard to move the blue circle. And we can move it all the way around, but when we actually get close and actually touch our other circle, 
you'll see that we actually get this hit. So that gives us our collision. And again, we'll it will just be when the actual circles touch. And we can see now that we get that idea of the collision detection with these bounding balls. And if we have a very quick look at the code then, so if we come in here, so again, we're just simply defining the target circle. And again, we're giving it its um, center point position and then a radius. And same with our player, which is the blue one that we can move around. So again, it's got a center point position and a radius. And then that's just um, the code to make it move around the screen. But down here then, we'll have our check collision function. So we give it our two um, bounding balls our system then calculates the minimum distance that the uh, the minimum separation distance between our two centers, which is just the two radii added together. It then works out this minimum distance squared. Remember, that's what we're going to be using in our comparison. We then calculate our x separation value, which is just the difference between the two x coordinates. Same with the two y coordinates. And then we can use our Pythagoras theorem to calculate, in effect, d squared as our x separation squared plus our y separation squared. As we said then, we just we can compare these square values to save us having to do a square root. And we can do this um, uh, comparison here where we're comparing the square of our actual separation with the square of our minimum separation. And if our actual one's less than or equal to our minimum one, then we have a collision. And that's when we send back a true value then. So that gives us another collision detection algorithm to put into our coding arsenal. And this is still a very fast technique, because as we saw, it only involves addition, subtractions and multiplications. There are no complicated um, trigonometric or, or other um, functions that we use. So it still becomes very powerful for doing our idea of coarse collision detection, where we're going to work out which objects are really not close enough for us to bother doing our very fine-tuned um, collision detection. And we can show an example of this, because this is what we do in the Asteroids course. And again, I'll put a link up in the corner there so you can have a look at that one as well. But if we slow down the motion on our Asteroid collision detection, we'll see that we use this bounding ball technique to identify when our player bullet gets close to an asteroid. And in this demo here, it's when the asteroid turns red. And then we can see that we start doing our more fine-tuned, our actual ship um, detection algorithm. Uh, and that will then be wait then for the bullet to actually enter inside the lines of the polygon and do a true collision. But again, that's a much more computational expensive um, test. So we use this bounding ball to give us a, fa a coarse um, filter before we go and spend our computing resources on something like our crossing number algorithm. So that then is the bounding ball algorithm. And do make sure you visit the tutorial page for this and I'll put the link in the description below. And then I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll start looking at some of the more complex techniques such as this crossing number algorithm. So have fun programming and we'll see you soon. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.